Happy Halloween and thank you for joining me tonight. As someone who grew up using the internet in the 2000s, it might not be surprising to hear that I was once obsessed with Sonic the Hedgehog. Actually, obsessed doesn't even begin to describe it. It was basically my lifestyle. In the days of the Sonic shorts, fan characters, and sprite videos on YouTube, it was a great time to be a fan of the series. But, you might be able to guess where this is going. I'm talking about being a Sonic fan on the internet in the 2000s, on Halloween. That's right, we're going to talk about this little rascal. This demonic sack of fluff has haunted me ever since I first found out about it. Before we get to the games for today, I should give a little backstory on this character. This little demon is called the Tails Doll. It first debuted in a racing game for the Sega Saturn called Sonic R. It was unlockable in the Radical City course and served as the Tails counterpart to Metal Sonic. I guess they wanted to be creative with this one in particular, because Knuckles was still metal. Now this wasn't an especially noteworthy appearance, and he didn't appear in any games afterwards, but this would not be the end of the creature's legacy. When the internet found out about this character, it spread in a very unexpected way. People made all sorts of scary stories about how this creature was real and could be summoned by performing one of several rituals. Its inherent evilness grew over the span of several years, with some references to it going all the way back to 2004. In a way, it can be considered an early creepypasta. There were many different theories behind how it worked, how to summon it, what its intentions were, etc. But the primary theory was essentially this. The Tails doll was a cursed character that would come out of Sonic R to kill you. Most of the time, we would say it devoured your soul. You could either complete the game 100% or play the Tag 4 characters mode after unlocking Super Sonic. Tagging Super Sonic would provoke the Tails doll to come out of the TV, supposedly because he'd have enough power from the Chaos Emeralds to do so. But these weren't the only methods of summoning him. You could draw a picture of him, but that was an easily fallible theory. Most interestingly, you could go in the bathroom at 11 o'clock at night, turn out all the lights, and play Can You Feel the Sunshine from Sonic R Backwards, or Living in the City, another song that was pretty good. He would forego coming out of the TV and come to you directly. As we all know, demons love bathrooms. Now you might be thinking, that sounds kind of silly. That's because it does. But believe it or not, this doll managed to become the biggest nightmare for many of us who grew up hearing about it. Content for the Tails doll ranged from fan fictions to animations to people performing the curses online, and so on. I remember seeing so many videos called Proof That The Tails Doll Exists or something along those lines. Most of the time, they would be crudely made videos that people would use a laser pointer or something in. The Tails doll had a big red gem on his head, so that's what they were trying to convey. If you can believe it, I still fell for a lot of these. I've rewatched a few that are still on YouTube, and I have to wonder how I ever thought they were real. One of my favorites was called Tails Doll's Real Voice, great to show friends on Halloween. According to the description, the uploader claimed to have recorded the Tails Doll's Real Voice after performing the ritual. The video's gone now, but it sounded something like this. Can you... But it gets better. People in the comments claim that they heard it say, Can you feel the sunshine? But the original uploader got needlessly defensive and insisted that wasn't what it was saying. I mean, unless the video was fake, how would you know? In addition to videos, there was a website dedicated to user-submitted stories based on the Tails doll. The Quacker and Bowen website was great for reading stories of varying believability. I remember one was just about Big the Cat. In another, the Tails doll gave someone diabetes. People got really creative with these. I especially remember the site because there was a phenomenon where people claimed to see what looked like the Tails doll's head appearing faintly in the background every so often. I remember experiencing this a few times myself, so needless to say, the Tails doll was a huge source of childhood terror for me. To this day, I still have nightmares about him every so often. Photos and videos of him also have potential to unsettle me, even though I'm an adult and I know it isn't real. I guess to this day, I still have a vendetta against this thing. So with all that being said, you can imagine my surprise when he made an appearance in a rather popular Flash game that I happened to come across. It was called Tails Nightmare, developed by The Blocks in 2008. I first found this game because Tails happened to be my favorite Sonic character. He's the only one I actually own a plushie of. It's hard to keep plushies around when Grace here thinks they're all chew toys. But that aside, this game really caught my attention. The developer, The Blocks, was a respected community member. He also made Tails Cosmic Rush, which was pretty good. He clearly knew what he was doing when it came to game development. So this Flash game was obviously horror-themed and originally released for Halloween. 
It's also notorious for being a little hard. I used to struggle with it myself, so let's see if I've gotten any better as the years have gone by. This is Tales Nightmare. Hey, happy Halloween 2008, everyone. Do you all like the Dark Knight? So you can control your difficulty and how many lives you get. These really detailed features are actually impressive for a 2008 Flash game. It doesn't even demean you or lock you out of parts of the game for choosing easier options. They're just happy to have you around and give you the personal choice to challenge yourself. Good on you, the blocks. So you're Tails, and you're in this reddish forest desert place for reasons unknown to you. You can use your two tails to fly, you can spin dash like a cartwheel, and you can even launch yourself into a high flight with a tail spin. There are no regular enemies in this, only gigantic thorns. The Blocks claims he didn't add enemies for reasons even he doesn't know, but I think it works. Even without things trying to kill you, it just solidifies how alone you are out there. It really builds anticipation for what awaits you. You never know when you're gonna run into something. It plays kinda like a Sonic game, just with Tails instead of Sonic. Unlike in typical Sonic games, you have to take it slow, because if you go too fast, you won't be able to navigate these thorns and spikes. You can set how many rings you lose when you take damage, so the full difficulty is your decision. Still, some of these are hard to avoid. There's also a lot of backtracking when you open gates you saw earlier by hitting switches later. It works in this context and feels rewarding. Though as you go on, the obstacles get harder to work around. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try and get that. Also, did you hear that tail scream? He's actually voiced by Tinkerjet, who also temporarily voiced him in Super Smash Flash 2. Small world. I also have to mention that the reddish color of everything really suits the environment. This definitely feels like a horror game for Halloween. Yes, it's challenging, but so far the challenge is welcome and the gameplay is pretty good. So are you ready for the moment we've all been waiting for? I think it's about time. At the bottom of the map, you meet the dreaded villain himself. The horrifying Tales equivalent of Chucky is waiting to spring at you. Thorns close you in and you have to fight the Tales doll. Now let's discuss general Tales doll lore. It was widely agreed that he was an insurmountable foe capable of ultimate destruction, possibly the strongest Sonic character in the entire continuity. But come on, do you really believe Eggman could make something like that? Though it is believed his gem gives him his power, which some people claim is a piece of a Chaos Emerald. So with everyone claiming this monstrosity is super powerful, how hard do you think this fight will be? The answer is about as hard as you can expect. The Tails doll will absolutely obliterate any beginner player. He shoots beams of energy at you and you have to jump at him when he passes by. He'll also take control of the field and mess with your controls. I'll admit, having not played this game since the 2000s, I couldn't remember how to fight back when he did this. Eventually, I figured out that the controls were reversed. It was a lot easier once I knew that, but the fight only gets harder when he takes enough damage. So I have to ask, is this a judgment-free zone? So with infinite lives, there's a bit less stress, but you can actually put codes in at the menu screen to start at any checkpoint, including the boss fight. It's a good way to keep your progress even if you're like me and you keep dying. So once the Tails doll has taken enough damage, spikes come out of the ground repeatedly and you have to fly, but as soon as you do, the Tails doll flies into you. Darn. Darn. Ow. 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 Darn it. Good thing I cheated. Ow. Then he teleports on the ground and you have to jump on him. Only after he finishes teleporting, though. Otherwise, you take damage. Totally fair. This might be the perfect simulator of how it would be to fight the Tails doll in real life. You're on your toes the entire time, never allowed to let up for even a second. The moment you let your guard down, it's all over. You have to feel the stakes and let them motivate you. You won't let this rejected flea market sewing project get the best of you. This is for all the childhood nightmares, you abomination of thread and misused needles. And just like that, when you finally beat him, it's extremely satisfying. Then you get to run away and head back to where- Oh no! Darn, thought I was rid of that piece of filth. But it's okay, Tails wakes up and finds out it was just like the title says. It was a nightmare. I mean, are we surprised? The game literally told us it was a nightmare. This hardly qualifies as a twist ending. But the Tails doll comes up behind his bed that has no frame. Then we fade to black and get a funny voiceover. You again! GO AWAY ALREADY! A charming ending to a fairly scary game. Now this is a top quality Flash game. Like I said, the atmosphere really sells it. You don't need minion enemies to make a good platformer. Challenging, but good. But it also has a sequel, and this one's a lot more involved. It was made in association with MoFunZone, a company with a fairly big gaming website. 
This one has a lot more features and is apparently even better than the first, so let's check it out. Oh my god. It's the Lost Where's Gary commercial. We found it. So just look at the amount of options you can adjust here. You can truly cater your experience to however you want to play. A lot of thought must have gone into this. After that Tails doll fight, I ain't taking any chances. Let's go a bit easier on ourselves. So it starts off like a typical Sonic game in Green Hill Zone. It plays like the old Sonic the Hedgehog games, but with Tails instead of Sonic. I was a little confused at first because the jump button was Z in the last game, but it's X in this one. Other than that, you control the same way. Though there are a few new features. There are also different stages too. You activate them by going through these doorways. You can also glide on rails like in the games. It's pretty fun. But my favorite new feature is the ability to wall jump. You can jump back and forth between two walls to just fly to the top. I kept forgetting I could do this and kept getting stuck in otherwise easy situations to get out of. So once you make it to the top of the map, you- <coughs> Is this hell? So after the Tails doll makes a horrifying return, you find yourself in this reddish cave and you need to get out. Now here's where the challenge begins. You have robot enemies to fight, such as these ones that pop out of the walls and always hit you. And there's also this acid that kills you instantaneously. I died to this acid far more than anything else. The thorns are back, but these drill enemies that drop their spinning spikes on you are new. They aren't as annoying as the ones that come out of the wall, though. Oh hey, look at that. Oh. Oh, I was so caught up with admiring that kooky creature I forgot to pay attention. They suck though. <laughs> do you ever have it happen where you do well in a stage but then you die and you can't get as far as you were again? Yeah, this level did that to me. Thankfully, like in the last game, you can enter a code to continue where you left off. Look out, it's an Indiana Jones reference! This stage is actually kind of hard. You have to be precise and you can't really afford any diversions like the spikes that jump scare you. It is really hard to get a handle on everything, but with enough determination you can make it to the end. Apart from the final boss fight, the stage right before it gave me the hardest time. That's just what you want to do, expend all your lives right before you fight the final boss. So when you get here, you may be wondering why the game is giving you so many rings all of a sudden. Well, your answer comes in the form of the frickin' Tails doll who's waiting here to devour your soul. Side note, once upon a time, a vocal group of fans tried to normalize schlumpy as the Tails doll's catchphrase, mimicking the sound of a soul being devoured. Can I just say I'm really happy that instance of lore was lost to history? I also gotta say, they really amped up the horror aspect of this battle. He glitches the screen, he changes in size, he develops fangs and glowing eyes. Hey, that's a poem. Like before, you start by jumping into him. When he takes enough damage, he very generously gives you more rings before enacting his next move. That's sweet of him. But let's not kid ourselves, it's clearly because he likes a challenge. An easy opponent wouldn't be satisfying for him. He craves the blood of the fiercest. So he flies around like some kind of mad animal and you have to try and lure him into these spikes. It's very clever, actually. Took me a moment to figure out, but it isn't the hardest part of the stage. That's yet to come. After this, he gives you more rings and shoots lasers at you, either directly or from the ceiling. You can see the shadow of where they're about to strike, but unfortunately, you're incredibly slow, and by the time you see the shadow on you, you just have to take the hit. The Tails doll appears in the final laser beam, and you have to jump at him before he teleports away. But you have to time it perfectly, because if you jump too early, the laser will hit you. If you're too late, he shoots you. You have to find the most comfortable nanosecond to strike. Then once you complete this, it just isn't enough. The ground crumbles and you find yourself on a platform floating in acid. Then the Tails doll assumes his final form with giant claws. He somehow looks a little less intimidating than before. Now this. This is the worst part of the fight. You have to fly up and hit the Tails doll's gem, but then you have to fly back to the platform as it moves. If you're a beginner, this'll look something like this. <laughs> Thankfully, I set my default ring count to be enough for the rings at the start of the stage to add it up to 100. You get an extra life at 100, so I just had an infinite number of lives for this fight. Eventually, I got into the swing of hitting him and flying back, making sure not to fly too high. Also, check out Tails at the start of this. He is so done with this by now.
So once you win, the Tails doll blows up in multiple different places and Tails wakes up in Green Hill Zone. It's inferred that the Tails doll knocked him out when he first ran into him, but Tails meets Sonic and tells him all about the bad dream he had. Then they run off as we zoom in on the Tails doll and he makes some unsettling noises. So this seems to infer that the Tails doll can control what you see in your dreams. That explains the plot of the first game, too. The Blocks just added his own material to the Tails doll lore. But before we close out, there's something else we have to do. In this, you have a few more cheat codes apart from level skipping, one of which allows you to actually play as the Tails doll. I'm not joking, you can play this thing as the wretched accumulation of dumpster collected fabric himself. Though the game sasses you for it. Hey, you're the one who let me choose him. But yeah, you can just levitate around everywhere. It's a lot of fun. At the end of the day, I do think this is better than the first. There's a lot to do, and you can tell a lot of effort went into it. It's very fleshed out, and I can feel the passion the blocks put in to make it. But let's not get ready to close out yet. This is not the end for the Tales Nightmare series. Well, I mean, it's complicated. See, there is a Tales Nightmare 3, but it's only a demo. The first screenshots for it came out in 2013. We could see there was water and some improved animation for jumping and going down slopes. Also elements reminiscent of old school Sonic the Hedgehog games such as old spring designs and power-up boxes. This is getting me excited. We gotta check it out. The demo was posted in 2014, so let's give it a go. So we're in a nightmare world and enemies from the Sonic games are here. To the left of the screen, we have three power-ups to choose from. A water shield that's useless in this demo, a fire shield that lets you swim in lava, which has replaced acid in the game, and a shield that will draw rings to you as you pass them. We also have a neat tree we can roll into to find some extra stuff. The enemies from the last game have also made a return, just in case you missed them. I think this one might actually be even more challenging than the second one. I mean, look at this. Who's gonna be able to dodge that their first time playing? That's just a trap. All the mechanics from the previous game are here, and the environment looks good. You're just gonna get used to seeing it a lot with how much you're gonna have to replay this. There's also this one stage where you have to swim through the lava, so make sure you don't miss the power-up beforehand. There's also a different power-up that's just there to trap you. That's just cruel. So you may be surprised to find out that the final boss isn't actually the Tails doll. You meet up with Sonic, but something is very wrong with him. That's right, we're fighting Sonic.exe. Now do I really have to explain who Sonic.exe is in the year 2023? Let me give just a quick rundown. There was a creepypasta about a haunted game cartridge that featured an evil Sonic who killed all his friends and was scary looking. That's all you really gotta know to understand this. Now this fight is unforgiving. You have to either jump or dash into him, but it can be hard to tell when you have an opening. He uses this Chaos Emerald to strike you with lightning, and it's very good at detecting where you are. Sometimes impressive programming can work against us. It's also really easy to get hit by him dashing around the screen, and even easier to fall in the lava when you try to catch your falling rings. Because this game doesn't have cheats, you have to beat the entirety of it in one single sitting. With this boss fight, that's kind of painful. He takes an awful lot of hits too, so he's bound to drain your rings and whatever shield you have by the time you beat him. When you finally do, he blasts you down, but before he can do anything, another Tails runs in and shoves him into the lava, causing him to drop his Chaos Emerald. On that shocking note, the game is over. So obviously, this is really intense. Who is this other Tails? Will this Emerald have any significance? Is the Tails doll here? Well, all this and more will have to remain a mystery. According to a post on his DeviantArt, when the Blocks heard that Adobe Flash would be shutting down, he ceased development on Tales Nightmare and pursued other interests. He has been open about the game being dead without much of a chance for continuation. Now when Ruffle came along, which allowed Flash games to be played, he expressed interest in continuing game development, but said he would be done with fan games and would focus on original content. No matter what he makes, I think we can all agree it will be worth playing. These games were definite indicators of his skill and passion for what he makes. Whether the third game is finished or not, I'm glad we have what we do, and I'm satisfied with the series overall. But... I do have a bone to pick with a certain little puppet. I used to be terrified of the Tails doll, but after dealing with him in these two games, I think now I only want to fight him. So you know what? We're gonna give this curse a try. Yeah, I've known about it for all these years, but I've never actually done it. I've completed Sonic R 100% and even Tag Mode, but he stood me up on both of those occasions. He didn't even like the picture I drew of him. 
I think now the only way we can summon the Tails doll is to do it the same way you summon every other murderous entity. We're going to the bathroom. So, here we are in the bathroom. It's been a long time since I've come on camera. I think my last video where I actually came on with my phone like this was Polar Bowler, so it's been quite a while. So we have a bit of a problem, and that is we have a bit of a natural light outside. Well, that's a street light, I think. So we won't be in complete darkness, but you know what? I don't really expect this to work anyway, so... And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. I have to kind of fumble around in the darkness to find the button here. Okay, I think there's a bit of a pause before it starts. That is. I wonder if I could summon Bloody Mary here and just get double teamed by both of them. So, I was in there for the entire duration of the song, and to say the least, nothing ended up happening. So either the Tails doll doesn't exist, or he has some problem with me. He should probably come and say it to my face, but you know. I actually tried this three times, mostly because of minor technical inconveniences. So, yeah, he's really not coming. I think it's safe to say this curse was a bust. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.